and Death Note has been escalated to, to the point where they're going to kill me if I don't kill them. So I'm going to give half my life to a demon to get the Shinigami eyes to kill him first. Uh, do you, do you, um, is there like a hell or a heaven in Death Note? I'm just, I'm just wondering what's the downside of being just killed when you, when you haven't. <laughs> Well, why would I do that when you've already done that and you could just tell me? No, I mean, you've basically you spoiled it. it's the like... entire series for him. You might as well complete the spoiler. All um, I know is some guy is that Willem Dafoe gives some guy a book. I can't, I can't. And do he that starts I, I haven't down seen notes, the whole series. I'm working my and way he through it. starts jotting down notes and it kills people. <laughs> there if, was or, a fire fight. So hey, here's side, sidebar. Instead of giving half your life to a devil spend four years training at a police academy so you can legally ask people for their identification at which point then you have their true name and then you write in the death note and kill them this is why you're the captain <laughs> big brain time cheers to that okay hear me out how you doing elh all right and how you doing chat yeah chat how you doing <laughs> hi i'm elh i'm the game master i think we broke dag but this is star trek euthenia Session five of season one should be a good time all around. Uh, only real announcement I have this week is that uh, if you haven't heard already, I am doing a 12 hour uh, stream on October 25th, 13 days from now. And that will feature uh, two one shots in which I will be a player. And then I will be streaming a very special season three opener of Motley Heights. But yeah, uh, don't really think I have anything else. Let's just do introductions and get this show on the road. So, uh, Captain, start with you and we'll go around. Sure. And I just got to say, I'm super pumped for the for the 25th. I'm also going to be playing in one of the games, GM'd by our illustrious uh, chief science officer for this one, but uh, the, the only Dare Wolf. Um, I'm also super pumped for the for for the season three premiere, of Motley Heights. It's our after school special episode where we team up with like Bugs Bunny and the Ninja Turtles to help kids say no to drugs. Uh, but for tonight, uh, I'm Aaron, as I hope some people know, at least I know, that's really what matters. Um, and I'm the captain, RJ Williams, the human from the moon. I'm Wani. I'm playing Arzus Deco, the XO of Euthynia. Uh, she's an empath. Half Betazoid, half human. All badass. Oh, see, and you interrupted it. See, remember that thing I said about you to stop doing? You just did it again, Aaron. Maybe you could work on that, maybe, you know, but, you know, character growth is hard for people of your nature. But anyway, with that being said, <laughs> my name is Darewolf. Darewolf Gaming 88 on Twitter and Twitch. I am playing Commander Soro Soros, uh, the Chief Science Officer. I'll also be that guy that's running a game during uh, ELH's birthday stream, uh, Star Trek Adventures, which is going to be super fun. And uh, I'm really excited for ELH to be there. There's another person will be there that I'm less excited about, but you know, hey, got to pick your battles. Listen, you got to give you got to give Aaron a little bit of breathing room here. You can't just keep nagging him. You got you got to no, breathe no. before you, between so the nagging. Straight in. I'm going to ram it up in there and work it like a sock puppet. See, right. this is this is the thing. Like, no, this is it's a PG-13 di- stream. Yes, it is. Supposedly, yes. Wait, this isn't Motley Heights. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm still channeling Nikki T right now. Let me get let me calm it down. My bad. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> anyway, and everybody, get your bingo cards ready because it's Dag's turn. Hey everybody, it's my turn. I'm Dag. Uh, yeah, I play Euthenia's resident Edosian, three hands, three legs, bald head, but you know, doesn't really matter a whole bunch. I uh, I am eagerly counting down the ways to my Star Trek Lord of the Rings wedding. If you want to talk about that, hit me up at Trek Nexus. There you go. It's good for my heart. I'm gonna be there. I'm going to see you. <laughs> yeah. All right, then. I believe, Mr. Razib, you have today's opening log. So if you would uh, care to take things away. Glorious. Medical officers. <laughs> no more presodinium nitrate for dinner. Medical officer's log, start eight. 
97183.1. The Euthenia is approaching a binary black hole consuming a dark matter nebula. This event has hyper accelerated the merging of two black holes, something that shouldn't be happening nearly as quickly. The merger is expected to release more energy than the combined power of all light from the stars in the observable universe, which is actually quite fascinating. Computer, enter a note in my medical log to schedule additional nurses to treat any incidences of star blindness due to this event. Hmm. Lesser followers can't be trusted to file reports on time, let alone maintain proper ocular hygiene. In any case, the science department is a veritable soiree of excitement, preparing to witness another GW150914, now dubbed a GW181005. Something like only the 18th time this has happened in recorded history. That date amuses me in its Earth centricity. Their old Gregorian calendar lives on, much to that ancient Earth Pope's pride, I imagine. I'm busy enough. Arethian flu cases are popping up on the ship. Unusual, but perhaps not in the case of our castaway status. There are treatments available, but if anyone begins itching uncontrollably, losing too much hair, or develops stripes that appear hot pink under ultraviolet light, they'll recover just fine. As is the case, I've adorned my favorite bandolier of hypospray injections to inoculate the crew. Computer, keep a feed of crew life signs cross reference with these symptoms maintained in my tricorder. Uh, doctor. Do doctor. One I've moment, been... Captain. End log. Captain? Well, I, I, not, not to rush you, Major, but I've been sitting here for several minutes while you've yes. done a log. I'm supposed to get an inoculation. I know. Just a moment. Oh, you know what? Here, let me just dab it into your neck real quick. It'll be fine. What? <laughs> if it itches Thanks. too much, come back. I can find some kind of a mild analgesic cream. Uh, can you define too much? Um, big swelling, bulbous hives. Okay. Um, the entire interior of my mouth has gotten numb. Ah, numb tongue. Can't do anything for that anymore. Well, thank you, doctor. I will, uh, I will be in the astrophysics lab if anybody needs me. Enjoy the event, sir. Thank you. As the captain hops off the bio bed with that lovely slur. Um, Razib, you're left relatively alone in Euthenia's, well, one of Euthenia's main sick bays. But uh, after a moment, you actually get a uh, chirp on your communicator. This is Razib. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Man, I swore I wouldn't yawn when. Uh, I, you know who this is. I'm the only person that yawns on this damn ship. Um. Can you come down to engineering when you get a moment? It, nothing, like, immediate, but, you know, just, just when you got a moment. Of course. Cool. Cool, uh, rash out. Uh, time to get the medical bag. Are you loaded? All right, good. Before we actually yeah. journey down to engineering, uh, I thought what we'd do is we'd go to the bridge. Actually, you know what? I think uh, Astrometrics might actually be the better destination here rather than the bridge. So Astrometrics on the Euthenia, uh, it's actually state of the art. Um, unlike, say, Voyager, where you would have seven of nine manning that thing 24 seven, um, you now have a rotating cast of NPCs and other people that are in here to more or less uh, witness not just the passing of this black hole merger, but also to sort of help in the charting of the course home. So right now, uh, Commander Sarus and Commander Stetko, you guys are both present. Uh, Dorothy uh, is also here, and the captain will join uh, as is dramatically appropriate. But on the view screen, on the curved view screen uh, that sits be uh, 
sorry, that sits before um, sort of a slightly raised dais where there's a bunch of panels and terminals. Uh, what you're seeing is a live feed of the two black holes. Now again, normally a black hole is invisible, except by the way it warps light around it, but because it's consuming a, a nebula, albeit a dark matter nebula, you can sort of make out the two swirling spheres of gases the gases and other interstellar debris is sucked into the maws of the event horizons. And I think Dorothy kind of has her back to all of you as she's looking at this and goes, you know, I kind of wonder what would happen if you put someone in one of those. Uh, don't think we've, or at least I can't access any known record of someone going into a black hole and coming back out. Uh, that's because such a record does not exist. Although it is theorized that they would see both the beginning and end of the universe simultaneously. It likely drives someone mad. Well, see that, you know that whole encounter with, uh, what was it, Void? Void's library, or, yeah, I think it was Void. Just has yes, me wondering. Void, the library of Babel. Ah, uh, that's what it was, yes, yes, yes. I wonder, wonder if they're all like that. How do you mean? I mean, how does one tell the sentience of a black hole? At least in my experience. And I will admit that the experience is, well, not very robust, but I believe they just talk to you. Sample size of three. And every time they have talked to us, so I mean, we're three for three. Well... I'll keep bombarding it with a standard hail until someone tells me otherwise, but I, uh, I don't know. And it's really weird because up to this point, Dorothy's sort of in the rock, sort of in the standard, sort of, you know, like, hey, I'm the computer, I'll do things for you. But this is a rare moment of them introspecting. So mm. whether or not you want to capitalize that, I leave unto you, yeah. but it's it's damn noticeable at this point that she is like, Hmm, I wonder what this means, kind of a thing. Uh, so Arzu would like just walk over next to Dorothy and gaze out as well mm -hmm. onto the, the screen and the view and just sort of stand there with her, be like, is there something on your mind? Well, a few things actually. Uh, well, I say a few. It's more like numbering in the thousands because I'm running half the ship. But I don't know. Just something about seeing two forces of nature that like this in the wild. I don't know. It just kind of... Uh, what's the human expression? It makes you wonder where you came from. I mean, we never... Or at least to my knowledge, I never even got an answer of why I started to exist. So... Black holes are definitely one of the mysteries of our universe. We still don't completely understand why we can't understand them. I always think of it as, and I'm not a scientist, but basically mathematics flipping us the bird. That's an earth saying. Hmm. And some think that um, black holes are secretly the engines to the universe where... Um, they will all ultimately condense into one giant singularity and the Big Bang will happen all over again. Now, that is interesting. And at this, Dorothy actually kind of turns to look at Sarus. Sarus, where do you stand on the whole uh, heat death of the universe or collapsing universe? Do you, do you think the universe is always expanding or do you think it's going to collapse as Stetko just said? Is it going to you know, kind of collapse back into itself and then explode again? It's actually interesting you should bring that up. I think of the universe more as a donut shape. It is expanding to a certain point and then collapses back in on itself merely to expand again. It is a cycle. And I think Dorothy fully turns to look at you at that and goes, is uh, accessing now, is that a Cation belief? It is. Hmm. It is based uh, slightly on some ancient religious philosophy, but we do have some data that seems to support this. Um, however, minimal. <laughs> and that's what we're out here for, Dorothy. That's our job, is to uncover the mysteries of everything. 
Well, I will uh, I'll keep an eye on this and uh, keep you all up to date. But uh, Captain's going to walk through the left door in about 12 seconds, so I'll let you handle him for the moment. And Dorothy winks at both of you, and then uh, she vanishes into the ether as she is wont to do. Commander Setko, before the uh, captain arrives, I just wanted to ask, did she seem off or slightly not herself? Um, Jam, would, like, does Dorothy give empathic readings or not? Unfortunately, no. Okay, um, good. good. But what I would tell you is that okay. if Dorothy ever does start to feel like you feel feelings from her, I will let you know. Ooh. Okay. Love it. Uh, perfect for now, though. So she would sort of lean against the console, tap her fingers. You know, Russ, uh, I never have gotten any empathic readings from Dorothy, but it doesn't, I don't really need that to agree with you. I think something was off there. I am not well, the commander. Oh, hello, Captain. Interrupt, but the captain does walk in. Oh. But the token placement is very deliberate. He comes through the right door. And uh, he will immediately go to a uh, replicator terminal and sort of lean in computer water. It really tells you. Please for state temperature. <laughs> <clears throat> Eight degrees Celsius. Please restate unit of measurement. He's just going to type it into the console. <laughs> the water materializes at your specified temperature. Commanders? Sir, are you feeling better? My tongue's numb. A side effect? Well, I think uh, the major gave me the inoculation under under protest. He jabbed me in the neck with it, and every time I get a hypo in the neck, there's something. Which doesn't really it isn't really helped by the fact that he's also my ENP, so. You seem to be speaking fine. It's the water. That's a trick I've learned over the years that when this happens, just cold glass of water. Mm. Well, uh, Russ and I were just discussing Dorothy. Oh, what about? I think it's not great to wait with her, Captain. In, in what way? Uh, well, um, to be completely candid with you, Captain. She is showing signs of, well, humanity. Also, she told us you would come to the left door and you came to the right, which is slightly disconcerting for a computer that is supposed to get everything, well, correct. Is it possible the stellar phenomena we're observing is having some kind of adverse effect on her? That is a very insightful theory, Captain. Let me run some scans. I too must admit I'm eagerly awaiting the event, as it were. I want to see what potential effect it might have on me. So two, uh, three quick things. Uh, first off, chat, don't worry. Uh, I've deliberately turned off Q powers because this is a smaller self-contained episode. So use it as a chance to build up your points. Um, second thing is we'll do a roll for Sir Us in a moment. But something I need to say about Stetco is because you guys have moved away from the, the galactic barrier, your heightened telepathy empathy has actually started to recede. You're starting to get far enough away that the barrier is no longer affecting your mind and you're also not feeling that sort of overwhelming presence as much. It's still there but it's definitely decreased to the point that it's noticeable. Um, but yeah, let's do that roll for Sarus real quick. Uh, Sarus, if you want to give me a, call this a reason science, the Euthenia will s assist you with a sensor science and let's make this a difficulty of three. 
I'm gonna give you a threat. Okay. Uh, I have sensor use. Uh, Would apply, uh, yeah. And if someone could get the Euthenia. All right, two successes overall, which means that we need I to see an assist from the Euthenia. So I can re-roll that. Well, wait, if you have Cautious, it's Momentum. Nope. Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. Never mind. Okay, yeah, it's never mind. Bold that uh, is Threat. That's right, yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah. that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. anyone, uh, anyone get in the ship? Uh, can I also assist Commander Russ? How are you doing it? Um, well, I'd like to be able to leverage my advisor talent. Uh, uh, um, and just, I don't know, just point and tell me to remember, tie in the lateral subspace sensor arrays and, I don't know, cross-reference with something or other. Not telling me that you are a scientist as well. What did you study? I'm sorry, Russ. Come again. What? Did Did you ask me where I studied? Correct. Starfleet Academy. Well, sure, but was there a specific part? Never mind. And um, he goes back to his his guess. <laughs> Well, um, Captain Williams, if you are assisting, uh, go ahead yeah. and give me a presence command assist, and then uh, this is free momentum for you, basically. So just don't presence roll a complication. Command. That's all you have to do is don't roll a complication. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You get your one success. You get your one momentum. So, Sarus, what I'm going to say is that when you look at the black holes on sensors, you know, the standard sort of void where you can't really penetrate past the event horizon. But what you are noticing is an overabundance of Tetrion particles. Now, the reason I didn't make this as a handout because I wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page. Tetrions are one of those things that quantum singularities make that are found in Romulan warp cores. They come from black holes and singularities in general. But it's also what your weapons, or at least the ideal weapons for the Euthenia, that's what they're based on. Um, now that said, when I say overabundance, I don't mean like 150%, I don't mean like 200%, I mean a whopping 900% more than what should be there. Captain, there are an overabundance of a particular particle and not just over 900% more than there should be for this particular phenomenon. I will need more time to analyze this data, but I will give you a full report. And you do get a free question as science officer. Um, great thing. Uh, suggestions from the crowd. Um, what's, what's producing the overabundance of, of Tetrions? That's, that's a great one. I asked that question. All right. So I don't want to answer it fully because if I answer it fully, it's going to give away things. But sure. when you scan the surrounding space, like the dark matter nebula, et cetera, et cetera, it's a theory, just a theory at the moment. But you think there used to be a stellar body here, a star or a planet. Something was here before and was consumed by the black holes. Was it? I'm assuming it was big. Um, that's another question. Never mind. I'll give it to you free. You're looking at something on the size of Saturn. A big planet. It's a gas, gas giant or large. It would appear that there was something very large, similar to the Saturn of the Sol system. It was consumed by the two black holes. And that is why these tetrion particles are so robust here. At your permission, I would like to assemble a team to analyze this more thoroughly. Do you believe that the ship is in any danger pending the collision? That is what I wish to determine. Well, Commander, use whatever resources you feel is necessary. Commander Stackpole, I'd like to pursue an alternate line of inquiry as well. 
could we perhaps harvest these tetrion particles to accelerate the refit of the Euthynia's tetrion arrays? We can certainly involve Rash, sir. And I'll leave that to you, Commander. Aye. One other thing, Captain. Um, in my free time, I've been doing some research on some ancient earth remedies. You mentioned water was helping. Have you also tried herbal teas or uh, what were they called? Um, essential oils. I... What, what precisely is essential about them? I will do more research and get back to you. you Thank you, Commander. Oh, Lord. All right. So we're going to shift down to engineering at this point. And what I'll say is that, uh, Wani, whenever you feel Stetco is a dramatically appropriate time to enter, you certainly may. Okay. But to start things off, uh, as we shift over to engineering, where we've got those two dual warp cores laid out horizontally, thrumming away, uh, Razib, you walk in, and what you're immediately noticing is that the room is mostly empty. I mean, usually when you walk into main engineering, there's officers on duty, there's, you know, people here that are in charge of making sure everything's running perfectly, monitoring situations, etc., etc., but there's no one here. I mean, you look around, and no one. All right, so you pull out your tricorder. Give me a reason, medicine, difficulty of zero. <laughs> and you would have a focus here, yes. Hey, there you go. Three successes, and that means you're up to four momentum total. Yeah, there's no life signs here. Well, small addendum. There is a life sign... It's coming from behind you. You know it to be Rash. And as you maybe turn to look, Rash is yawning and stepping out of her office and goes, Oh, uh, good. You're, uh, you're here, Major. Um, uh, I, I, th this, is, uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, and she motions at the empty uh, engineering bay. That, uh, that flu you're, uh, you're working on. I mean, I know I'm naturally immune to it, but... Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's 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 hit not just alpha and beta, but gamma and delta shifts too. So uh, I don't know. You got any got any advice? Because sure, I can run the whole thing by myself, but uh, I won't lose any sleep about it. I could concoct some kind of aerosolized treatment for it, but it's not extremely effective that way. But it might get twenty-five to thirty percent of your staff back here. For a moment, I thought you'd automated the entire place. Well, and she kind of looks around conspiratorially. I mean, I I could, but I, I just worry that if I do that, then there's, there's this whole thing about the computer coming to life. And while I trust Dorothy, uh, I just worry that if I cut off or automate, automate too many things, it just might get messy. It might, it might get messy. Well, then you run into the other nuance of having to train everybody up on the automation in the event of your untimely absence. She kind of thinks about that for a moment and goes, you know, I, I suppose you, you do make a good point. Um, do, you, do you have any engineering training, Doctor? I mean, I, I see you're wearing literally a bandolier of hypo sprays. Um, that was from my old security days. Engineering is not my strong suit. And she kind of narrows her eyes and points at your belt. Uh, what about that? That looks to be a medical phaser of some sort. Yes. That's for emergency purposes only. Mind if I take a look at trying to say you want me to cross-train in engineering? I'm just saying if you've got the time and there's no major medical emergencies... I'm looking around your empty engineering bay, and this is quite the medical emergency. If there's nobody here, and there's suddenly a warp core breach or something of that nature, and you're the only person in here, and you pull a Spock at Genesis, then no one's going to be here to fly the ship. That is a medical emergency. So 
I think I need to go treat your engineering staff. All right. Um, could you start with beta shift? They're kind of my most reliable. Excellent. And uh, uh, Stetko would enter. At this point, as Stetko, as you walk in from behind Rash, and uh, Rash hears the door opening, her ears perk up, and she looks and goes, "Oh, uh, Commander Stetko. Uh, hello. Uh, something, uh, something I can help you with, or the Major can help you with while he's here." You're gonna be happy, Rash. Major, why are you hypo spraying the captain's neck? He was ill and needed an inoculation. You know he has reactions in his mouth to that location. You gotta do it in his arm. It was essential. What exactly is essential about that? My lucky hypo spray was in the vault across the room. So I just used the direct injection and it's most, you know, effective in the uh, arterial vasculature of the human neck. Okay, well, you have three arms, so remember that next time, in case you could maybe ensure I can actually speak to Williams in the time of crisis. Just please do not spray his neck. Yes, Commander. Thank you. I think I think Rash does giggle a little bit about that and go, okay, not going to lie, it is, it's, I, it's, Sorry, Major. It is a little funny to to hear about uh, to things like this. It always always brightens my day. But um, <laughs> I, I don't I don't mean to be rude, Commander. But you, you didn't come down here just to yell at the Major, make me laugh. Uh, what what, uh, no, what brings you No, he just happened to be there. Uh, well, uh, computer, two coffees. And like the computer lunch. chimes, but the replicator doesn't actually do anything. And I think that actually attracts Commander Rash's attention. She looks over and goes, uh, computer, two coffees. Again, there's that negative beep. Rash sighs, uh, actually takes the goggles that are usually atop her head and puts them on proper and looks. Now that is interesting. Uh, and it's a good thing you're here, Razib. Uh, this, this flu, what is it called again? Arethian. Arethian, okay. Um, do you know if it spreads to bioneural gel packs? Please say no. There is no documented case of Arethian flu infecting a gel pack. <sighs> okay, then uh, prepare to write a paper. And she walks over to the, the wall where the replicator is, pulls off a panel, reaches all the way in up to her shoulder, and pulls out... Um, a bioneural gel pack. Now, usually bioneural gel packs are like clear. They look like there's brain matter inside. This one, pitch black. And she just hands it to Razib. And without touching it, he will just be ready to scan it. Okay. I would like you to roll me a reason and medicine difficulty of three. And as a reminder, you are currently sitting at four momentum total. Hmm. Reason, medicine. Uh, two momentum for two dice. Uh, it would be three, three momentum, momentum for uh, for two dice. I'll take it. Okay. I made it. I'll use it. Uh, and uh, how about? Uh, I think a gel pack is as xenobiological as it gets. I'll give it to you, sure. <laughs> Ooh, more creative focuses, people. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. Awesome. Uh, do you have... I forget, what is it bold medicine or cautious medicine that you have? I'd have to give you threat for that. Mm, okay. So I think what's going to happen then is receive, unless you want a determination that, I think you're just going to fail with a complication. Uh, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. All right, love it. Love it. All right. So uh, as you actually scan uh, with your tricorder, uh, the gel pack actually begins to vibrate a little bit, like almost like an exorcist thing where like the, the pack is just vibrating on its own. And then, uh, you know, Rash just instinctively lets it fall to the floor. And when it falls to the floor, 
it sort of, I'm not going to go into gross detail, but it does kind of sploosh everywhere. Ugh. Nobody breathe. Question, what if I've already breathed? Okay. Rash, don't drop any more gel packs. Please. God, that smells so bad. Computer, activate a level 10 medical quarantine around the vicinity of these plot points. And there's kind of that vomp noise as a medical quarantine field is established. I'm going to need to excise this section of the flooring and take it to the sick bay. Well, we need to inoculate the entire crew. Not in their necks. I'm already working on an aerosolized cure. Commander. Well, that seems highly efficient. How quickly will that be done? It depends on how grossly infected this gel pack is. Do you have any inoculations on hand? I'll take a red one, please. Jabber with your hypo spray and uh, Stevko. Mm-hmm. Because I find it funny, roll mm-hmm. me just your standard fitness medicine difficulty of one. <laughs> okay. Where is she? Here we go. Fitness medicine. Um. As I'm fitness medicine in your neck. <laughs> nice. Nice. Games of chance. I'm kidding. Amusing, but no. <laughs> escape and avoidance. There you go. <laughs> get, get away from the hypo. All right, you got what a one. That's, okay. Yeah, you got a one. You're fine. Uh, okay. So yeah, you get jabbed with the hypo, and maybe there's a momentary like wave of nausea, but it's nothing major. You just fight past it, and you feel okay. fine again. Okay. She turns to Rash. Rash, you want one too? Uh, sorry, uh, no, I'm 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 immune to the flu. Uh, trust me, uh, I actually kind of wish I, I I could get the flu because if I could, I might actually have an excuse to to sleep for once. The priority here is that I need to inoculate Beta Shift so that they can get down here and exercise this flooring sample so that I can take it to sick bay under quarantine. I mean, I I can exercise that for you now, uh, Doctor. Uh, and Rash sort of goes and pulls out like a type one like phraser uh, and sets it to a proper setting. He goes, uh, I guess I'm going to need to go into the medical quarantine field. Uh, let me go get an EV suit. I'll be right back. And uh, Rash momentarily runs to get an EV suit, leaving Setko and Razib a moment to talk to one another. Is your tongue numb? No. Good. Betazoid vasculature is actually, I don't know, about 10,000 years more evolved than humans, so it's not surprising. Well, you also inoculated me in my arm. Of course, make it the easy answer. (laughs) We'll call that Razib's razor. Hmm. A crude yet efficient description. So how are you finding the Euthenia? Expansive, of course. The uh, the boys on Delta Shift and and the girls and the Zays and the Zays. The, the, all of them are very good at making illegal liquor on the ship. Well, well we're out of the Federation's jurisdiction. Oh, I I I have. I have confiscated every drop. For yourself. For personal experimentation, yes. All right, well, if that doesn't keep you from keeping the crew healthy, then... I am a little concerned. If the bioneural gel packs are infected by a mutation of the Arethian flu, there may be other systems at risk, Commander. My main concern is uh, we have two huge black holes about to collide and 
uh, expel an enormous amount of energy. And if our shield systems are not up to snuff um, because of the bioneural neural gel pack infection, then the ship might be at risk. So shields and engines are priority then? Yes. I'll see if I can exercise moving the crew to areas where other sections of the ship can be depowered in the event that there is a, an emergency. I think at this point, that's where Commander Rash comes back with an EV suit, uh, does the proper quarantine thing where she expands the field with her in it. She bends down and uses her phaser to cut uh, off the section of the floor and then goes, uh, you want me to just beam this uh, to sick bay in a quarantine or you want me to actually follow you there? I think it should not go through the transporter system. If it's infecting the bioneural gel packs, who knows what it's going to do to the biofilters. Good call. Good call. Good yeah. insight. Rash, what I was going to come down here about is there's an excess of Tetrion particles uh, surrounding the stellar phenomena, and the captain has tasked us with finding a way to maybe weaponize those for our use. Um, I know that the Nasari and the Delta Quadrant had uh, Tetrion-based weapons at one point, so that might be a good starting point. Yeah, the uh, the Cations also favor, favor a uh, Tetrion-based weaponry, so... Oh, we're in great company. Yeah, we, we should be... Hold on, you said an overabundance, yeah? 900 times what we might be able to use. Am I saying that right, Jim? Uh 900%? You you are, and I think Rash is going to go, I, I'm sorry, maybe I'm dozing off. Did you say 900%? They threw the number 900 around, so yes, probably. She looks down at the gel pack. That, hold on. Uh, Doc, are you seeing an excess of, uh, I guess you would, what, what is the medical term for it? Uh, not waste, but byproduct. That's the word I want. Are, are you are you seeing the byproduct of necrotization? Are you seeing the byproduct of just brain death? At first sight, it does appear to be mild necrosis, but in order to get a more thorough reading, I'll have to actually perform an autopsy on a okay. gel pack. Because, uh... There's 900% more Tetrions out there than there should be. You know what, I'm gonna... It seems that your services may be more necessary in astrometrics. Perhaps I can take the sample to sickbay while I have your teams report there for inoculation. All right, well, I'll, uh, since I am in the quarantine field and in this EV suit, I'll, I'll get this sample to sickbay for you and then I'll figure out what's going on. Man. Understood. Yeah. I'll let the captain know the situation and uh, suggest that we all meet up once we've had some more time to absorb this information. We should access the bioneural reserves in the event of system failure. Aye. All right. So I'll before be we do that, oh, yeah. So before we do that, uh, skip ahead in time. I do want to check in on Sarus and Williams. So mm -hmm. let's start with Sarus. So Sarus. Would you have been staying in astrometrics this entire time? Would you have ventured elsewhere? Because as far as you know, you're just sort of observing a stellar phenomenon. So Sarus so wanted to try to analyze as much as he could the data uh, about these 900% uh, tetrion particles. And he's trying to... He's trying to figure out how, like, are they reaching out and touching the ship? If they're touching the ship, what systems are they affecting? Like he's trying to basically, he's probably gonna, he's trying to get to the same conclusion they've probably already figured out, just doesn't know they have. So that's mm -hmm. what he was trying to work on. Um, and also um, listening to uh, ancient earth uh, punk rock, because that's his latest kick. So, okay. yeah. Okay. So uh, let's, uh, let's actually add a red shirt here because uh, I, I think a red shirt would be fun. Uh, let's call him, let me just roll a few things. Ah, a Ferengi. Uh, let's call him Tog. T-O-G, just Tog. So, uh, Ensign Tog sitting next to you in Astrometrics. He kind of turns to you, Commander, and goes, Ah, question for you, Mr. Sarus. Sarus has got, like, little headphones in, and he's just like... 
And he like taps your shoulder to get your attention. Oh, 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 oh yes. Sorry, I forgot that you were there. Um, uh, how can I help you? Well, ah, I actually wanted to ask: Is it true that you wrote a paper once? I've written many papers. I am a scientist. Um, I should clarify: Is this the one that earned you your commission? You'd have to be more specific. Oh dear, I am not doing a very good job of this. Um, I believe it was subspace dynamics in relation to temporal anomalies. Or am I thinking of someone else? No, that was me. Okay, um, I, I just wanted to get your, your thoughts. Um, what, uh, do you think that could apply here? And you can tell that this also, hi Raiders, hi Cree. Nice to see you, Raiders. Thank you. Welcome. We're playing Star Trek Adventures. If you want to stick around and see us role play, awesome. If not, thank you for dropping by all the same. Uh, but back in character. So this guy, Tog, he's kind of hero worshipping, but he's the kind of hero worshipper slash fan that either is nervous because he's meeting you or nervous because he thinks he doesn't know things about you. So he's kind of doing that fumbling thing where... You know, you meet someone for the first time and you're trying to act like you're smart, if you get what I'm meaning. Ensign, I have a question for you. If I may, again, I am not good with uh, personal interaction all the time. I've spent much of my, here I am rambling as well. Are you nervous right now? Is there something I could do to make you more comfortable? Uh, I am just a, a scientist, a person on the ship. You may speak to me plainly. Ah, well, uh, acquisition rule, Number 123, you should never, ever meet your idols. And I can, I'm can i starting to see why. I, I'm having difficulty focusing. Why precisely are you having difficulty? I am just a furry individual who happens to have written some papers that happen to have become rather important. It is nothing special. It is just part of something that I find passion in. You yourself, what do you find passion in? Hold on. And he, he pulls out a pad, and if you look, he is furiously typing down what you just said. Ah, uh, right. Uh, oh, uh, what am I passionate about? Ah, uh, I, I, I mean, I really like the Cation fighters. I like how their impulse engines are, like, they operate on a different principle than normal. That is something that is very interesting. Although, I did want to pivot back to your comment about subspace dynamics. How do you think that would apply here? Well, um, this is just an observation, but do you not hear it? Hear it? Well, yes, and uh, Tog actually goes back and he presses a button and you notice on the view screen that an audio file has been playing this entire time. Um, and it's an audio feed of the black holes, um, but nothing's coming through. Or at least you are not hearing it. So, so Russ was listening to um, the Arctic Monkeys, so that's probably why he didn't hear it. Um, but he is going to ask Targ, Targ, turn up the volume a bit, if you would, or at least intensify it. I am not hearing it. Oh, right. Uh, no offense, but Ferengi ears, they're a little bit more sensitive than Cations. And uh, he, he does boost it, and... Again, I tried to get a good sound clip of this, but I wasn't able to. But if you'll imagine almost like a, a droplet of water, kind of that whoop noise, there's just a steady repeating signal of whoop as the black holes sort of pass around each other. But there's something else in there, too. Is it ring around the rosy? Computer, isolate... Uh, isolate song. I'm hearing something. Do you hear it as well? Yeah, yeah, that... So I'm not going crazy then? No. And then I'm going to ask... Uh, so Russ is going to ask the computer to, like, cut out the, the water droplet sound and mm -hmm. then try to intensify the other sound that's being emitted, this apparent song. Okay. Go ahead and roll me either a control or an insight difficulty of two. And if you have anything related to audio manipulation, anything related to computer use, that would apply here. You said control and what? Control or insight plus science. That's the same. Difficulty of two. Uh, Williams, may I spend that momentum, please? Thank you, sir. 
Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have any focuses here. Not that you need it with five successes. So, yeah, that gives you back three momentum. So, Sarus, Ring Around the Rosie is amplified and filtered so that you hear the song. But you notice something that is going to correlate with what everybody else has experienced. The song isn't coming from the black holes. It's coming from the computer inadvertently and erroneously interjecting it into audio feeds. All right. Uh, so Russ is going to realize this, and he's going to turn to his ensign. Ensign, what do you make of this? Well, um, if I didn't know any better, it's uh, it's like the computer's gotten sick. And what would you suggest we do to remedy this situation? Uh, speaking plainly, sir, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, I, I suppose we could... Perhaps we should inform the captain. That is a good beginning. But assuming... Let's assume the captain was not available. That we were the only ones who could fix this situation. What would be your steps in, well, doing so? Can I contact the doctor? What was this guy's name again? Tog, T-O-G. Tog. Tog. I am trying to show you how to have personal initiative, and oh. you are fighting me every step of the way. Oh. Try, simply try, my friend. Okay. Um, there, there was that one cool thing I saw Razib do once. Uh, he, he modified a TR one one six to shoot hypo sprays. Now I know it sounds crazy, but if the ship is sick, then maybe we need to like inoculate what its systems are. Like, like the gel packs and, and the warp core and, and, and things like that. The, we're going to need a really big hypo spray if we use it on the warp core. Ensign, that is a wonderful idea. At this point, why don't you inform the captain of our predicament as well as our discovery, and I will begin scanning subsystems and all systems to see which of them are affected. Oh. So Ross will chuckle to himself and head it back. I, oh, okay, sir. Ah. Uh, Ensign Tog to Captain Williams. Go ahead, Ensign. Um, S uh, Commander Soros and I would like you to know that the, the ship is sick. And I don't mean like sick as in cool, I mean like sick as in cough. Ensign, are you, such, are you, are you telling me that the, the ship's bioneural circuitry is ill? Um... Perhaps yes. It's it's inserting strange audio files into audio feeds. Well, that's good to know. I was actually just about to contact engineering. I tried to get a cup of coffee from my replicator, and I was recited several Mother Goose nursery rhymes. Ah, yes, we got uh, Ring Around the Rosie. Hmm. I old old Mother Hubbard. Got... While but, uh, um. While this is going on, um, mm -hmm. Sir Russ would like to try to identify what systems have been affected and start to quarantine them. So basically, corn them off. Mm -hmm. So if there's like you know if subsystem section alpha beta zeta was affected, he wants to start to like cut them off from the rest of the ship to try to contain the sickness. Basically, like start quarantining, mm -hmm. and he'll send uh, data to the captain of what he's attempting, um, and chuckle a little bit at his ensign because. He's doing, he's doing his best job. He appreciates yeah, he's, him. He's trying. That's what matters. He's trying. Oh. Uh, go ahead and give me a insight and engineering here. Okay. And the difficulty on this will be a three. All right. Uh, focuses. Do you have anything Power related systems. to computers, starship construction? Computers. I have computers. Yes. Computers will work. You said insight? Yes. Cool. And science? Yep. Difficulty of three. Um, you know what? I think this is important. I'm going to spend all three of those momentum. I'll roll four dice. Yeah. And... Hey, Less Sisters. There's a good band name. Good all right. Uh, four I'm successes, back. meaning you get a momentum right back. And yeah, so Russ, I'm going to say that when you start doing this, you actually see another actor begin doing the same. Um, but it's a it's a good actor. It's not a bad actor. The computer's not fighting you. And if you were to look at the command code, you see that it's literally a uh, rash on a pad as she's headed to the bridge kind of a thing. Like, she's joining in on your efforts. Commander Suras to Lieutenant Rash. Uh, 
Crap, was I demoted when I was asleep? Uh, I, go ahead, Soros, go ahead. Wait a minute, what was your rank again? I, there are so many people on the ship, I get them confused. Regardless, it's, Rash, it's thank you okay. for answering. I appear you have also identified that their ship is, well, for lack of a better phrase, ill. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's something that uh, I think the captain's gonna wanna do a meeting with us all about, uh... Absolutely. I will set an automatic algorithm to continue to uh, quarantine certain systems, and I will meet you in the ready room. Or well, um, conference room? Whichever the, one. The, the conference room, which I'm going to have to turn Dorothy off, which she's not going to like. But uh, uh, tell me, uh, is there a way you could do it without using the computer? Do you have like a, an, an, ens an ensign you could task doing this? So Russ is already gone. She's been talking to herself for like 15 seconds. Nice. <laughs> And she kind of realized that and goes, okay, all right. We'll just, all right, sure. <laughs> all right, and before we do a time skip, I want to see open call before we go to the conference room. Well, we'll take our break and then go to the conference room. Is there any scenes people would like to do before uh, the conference room? Can we do the, the meeting in Astrometrics? Sure. Uh, we because it's kind of like cool backdrop and yeah, relevant data on a big screen, and I love it. Yeah, we we can do it there. I mean, ex an executive mm -hmm. decision as the executive. You're the executive officer. officer. There you go. That's that's what I like to see. You have you have my full. Sanction. All right, no other scenes from me, but I leave it to the rest. What about uh, you, Williams, uh, Razib? What uh, what do you guys got? I'm I'm fine until we get to the meeting. I'm about? jabbing underlings in their arms. Let's actually track that. Uh, go ahead and give me a presence medicine difficulty of one. God, we're going to need both my jump army. Yeah, we got this, one. I would say this is going to be your attempt to get some. So presence medicine difficulty of one. And if you have anything related to triage, emergency treatment, anything of the nature. I, I have emergency medicine. I would say that applies at in this instance. I would like to give you enough threat to buy two more dice. Okay. I like how I just don't name that number. It's just give me enough. Mm -hmm. That would be three. Yep, it would be three. And Interesting. I will, I will definitely re-roll that single d20. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not another 20. That's just a d20 roll. Or do I reroll the stat? I mean, you if you you can do it either way. I mean, if you go through the sheet, it automatically calculates it. But if you just do a standard R D twenty. Presence medicine one D twenty. All right, it's not that a... gets you a momentum, and yeah. So, I, if you'll permit me, I think it's one of those situations where. Um, you're sort of going down like a corridor where it's just like quarter after quarters and you're doing the thing where you're knocking, people come to the door, you immediately jab them with a hypo, you nod, move on to the next door, et cetera, et cetera. Like you've got a system at this point. And I'd like to say that uh, you actually maybe even have to swap out your bandoliers like twice because you're inoculating that many people. Perfect. And with that, we're going to take a five to ten minute break. Uh, we'll be back very shortly. Stick around, everybody. As a file as a weapons platform, mm -hmm. which I'm into it. But I'd also like to get some turrets to cover the fighter bays as like a like flak screen to facilitate launch and recovery okay. um that's just that's my although if you think like well maybe arrays and, tur and turrets are a little too much then maybe like oh. one main bank on the front and turrets no no i uh i would agree and i did kick us back live because i wanted to get that recorded so that i wouldn't forget about it ah yes um, but yes, welcome back, everybody, to part two of session five of Star Trek Euthenia. If you're just joining us, the ship has apparently come down with an illness, and the players are meeting in the Astrometrics Lab to more or less discuss matters uh, and decide where to go from here. The backdrop to all this, of course, is a dark 
uh, Dark Matter Nebula getting consumed by two massive black holes that are set to collide in the next eh, 12 hours, maybe? 12 hours, okay. But yeah, everybody in senior staff is there. Razib, <laughs> you're there. Stetko, Williams, Rash, Russ. And I can throw other NPCs if you want them there, but the big five are there present. So, Commander Rash, what's the status of our ship systems with this illness apparently running through the gel packs commander sticko raises a good point are we in danger if we are unable to vacate the premises or rather will this progress to a point where we'll be rendered rendered immobile and rash is going to answer but she's going to answer by actually playing some of the sound recordings coming from uh the main computer bank so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link you guys in Discord. I'm going to give you guys a actual lyric video. You can choose whether to watch or not, but it's sort of an extra audio element to the thing. For chat and people on YouTube and people on Twitch, I'm going to play a low version of the instrumental. I think it's okay for me to use this, but if for some reason I have to mute the next few minutes, you know why. But uh, let's let's get a little bit of music going. Let's get a little uh, get in a little ambience going. But uh, as the sound begins playing um, as the music begins to swell and you start to hear Dorothy's voice singing about black holes and momentum mori and just almost like a computer that's realizing it has limits and a computer that has emotions and things of that nature. Uh, I think Rash lets that play for a few moments and then she sort of turns it down and says... Now, I'm no expert, but I, I think our Dorothy is sort of transcending, I, I wouldn't call them a beginning AI, but she's kind of making that teenager development, if you get where I'm going with this. <clears throat> Commander, are you telling me that my ship's computer is an adolescent? Uh, technically, yes. All right. Well, <clears throat> I, I I don't see what we can do about that other than try to be supportive. I, mean, I seem to remember a little bit of my own adolescence, but what's the relevance to our current situation, Commander? Well, that's the weird thing. And at this, she looks at Saras. Saras, I... Call me crazy, but doesn't Tetriana missions, don't they mess with Byron Old Gel Packs? Or am I just misremembering my training? No, that's incredibly correct. They do. Hmm. Because I think what's happening, Captain, if I had to make a guess, uh, the t increased Tetrions, somehow they're getting through the deflector screening, and they are, for lack of a better term, they're hyper accelerating Dorothy's development. Like, she wasn't supposed to do this for at least another three years. Captain, if I may, I see two possibilities. We can allow the AI, uh, the ship's computer, to continue to develop rapidly, or I could look at to modify the shield to, well, stop it from progressing. If you're open to a suggestion at this point, I think we should let her go through her changes. <clears throat> we could let her decide given the information that is true although in her current state she may not be able to make that decision rationally but she should be allowed the decision nonetheless agreed uh, the landmark decision of data v maddox gives her the right to choose if she is sentient then she is not property and we have to respect that voice is she active commander rash i disabled the listening devices but i can re easily re-enable them very quickly please do no adolescent relationship was ever helped by keeping things from them hmm. taps the button 
Uh, she can hear us again. Dorothy, could you join us in Astrometrics, please? And uh, materializing between Stetko and Razib oh. is Dorothy. <laughs> um, and what I would say is that, again, Dorothy, I think I've described a few times, but normal Dorothy kind of had that <clears throat> long white hair, the glowing yellow eyes, maybe a little red horn that came up on an opposite side of like a, a white pigtail that she had. Now there's a little bit of a difference. Um, she still has the long white hair, the horn, the pigtail. Um, but now she has a noticeable black streak uh, that actually kind of goes down her bangs on her left side. Um, and you notice that she's got on, quote unquote, heavy eyeliner now. Like, as Chad has already surmised, she's going through a teenage phase. So got to gotta look the part. And, and she's absorbed a lot of Earth media. Oh, yeah. Terran media. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. <clears throat> Dorothy. And Love the hair. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh, I thought it was me. I uh, I don't know. I just I felt like a change. It suits you. So mm-hmm. does the the rest. Oh. Well, thank you. I, I was worried the people would hate it. No. Why? Why would we hate it? I, I well. I I mean I've I, I I've consumed a <clears throat> lot of media. Um, a lot of watched a lot of old earth movies and uh it's usually like 50 50 you either hate it or you love it yeah fair enough my uh my mother's culture particularly is known for many very interesting ritual things regarding weddings so uh we're not one to judge when i was uh younger i went through a phase where i had these things called frosted tips in my hair mean like this and just for a moment the top of her head turns into frosted tips just so that she had a visual example yeah yeah i yeah, that's you know them. i did consider them but they just seem tacky for some reason i agree your 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 current look is much more tasteful frosted tips go away um not that I have... don't mind the attention. What uh, what can I do for you? Well, we've got some things we want to discuss with you. Our current situation pertains to you perhaps more than any other single member of the crew. And make no mistake about it, Dorothy. AI or no, you are part of this crew. Yeah, I understand that. All right. Just want to make sure uh commander rash can you and commander russ please explain the situation in a way that i am neither competent nor qualified to rash turns this for us why don't you take this one oh lovely um well to put it plainly you're aging rapidly and going through a lot of different physical and emotional changes and they will you know make you confused at times and um sometimes you'll be happy sometimes you may feel sad you may start to experience certain urges and he's just going to go on like a little bit of a tangent about like going through teenagehood to adulthood and do a terrible job of it terrible job of it and i think and Razib will well, then one day kind of interrupted. And it's okay. <laughs> to be sure, you are maturing in a way that is not well understood, but could be related to things that are happening on this ship that could be detrimental. Um, and we have okay. two options. We can allow you to, well, you can make the choice to continue down this path, or we could stop it here, where it is, by modulating the shields. But at the end of the day, this choice is yours to make. You are an individual with all the rights and responsibilities therein. You know, uh, and she, you know, she hesitates and kind of maybe even bites her thumb a little bit. You know, I, uh, let me do this first, because I think, I think this is germane to the discussion. And she snaps her fingers, and then Rash looks at her console and goes, Well, Dorothy's fixed the shield problem, so no more gel packs are going to explode on us. Good job, Dorothy. Oh, thank you. Um, 
I mean, I don't want to be a burden to the crew. I, I, I want to be, you know, I decided to come aboard because I thought I could help. I mean, that's sort of been my whole life is just wanting to help people, so... And Razib will put up his hand because at least on the map, it looks like he's standing next to her. Right. Don't think of it as a burden to the crew. Think of it as that we all respond to anomalies and certain things as organics. We get sick differently. And the treatment for those can be very unique at times. And in your case, it's not well understood and while we attempt to determine if a diagnosis is accurate, we want you to, to maintain your agency at all times. Well, um, I guess what I would say is, uh, and you can see she's thinking hard about this, which again, for an AI, especially one that lives in the ship's computer, just a moment's pause is already enough to make you think, oh, she's really thinking this over. So when she's quiet for like 30 seconds, you can tell that this is a major decision for the computer to make. Um, Dorothy kind of stops and goes, if, uh, start with you all then, uh, I kind of want to see where this goes. Oh, then it's settled. With your permission, Dorothy, I would like to monitor you during your transitions, just to make sure that you are, well, healthy. Of course, of course. Um, you know, I, uh, there's something I can't put, quite put my finger on, but something, uh, something's new. Watney, remember how I said I'd tell you if something happened with Dorothy? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's... I know there isn't really like a real world comparison, but you're basically getting the confused feelings of an infant now. Oh, so she's basically picking up like an emerging empathic signature. Presence. Mm -hmm. So kind of like, yeah, like witnessing like a newborn. Yeah. But Dorothy is highly intelligent. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I don't think she would say anything, but she would just like smile. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I think Dorothy kind of looks back at the screen where there's still the black holes and the nebula on there, and she goes, "You know, I want to try something, uh, Captain. You mind if I fire a Class Seven probe into the black hole?" By all means. Because uh, I want to try something. And uh, Rash kind of looks at the captain, wait, looks for that confirmatory nod. Okay. Yeah, he'll, he'll give it. And then uh, Dorothy snaps her fingers again, and you all see a probe fly out towards the black hole. You see it reach the event horizon, disappear. And then moments later, it reappears as it comes out of the event horizon. Uh, wait. How? I'm not and, 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 and the captain scientist. will actually say that out loud. <laughs> I'm not a scientist, so I will defer to Commander Soros, but I don't think that's supposed to happen. Well, if, uh, I mean, Rash will probably explain it a lot better than I can, but call it a, call it a hunch. I, I knew that a Class 7 probe would have the warp capabilities, and warp is just the application of subspace, so... It's not like subspace is tremendously messed up inside a black hole, so I thought, why not? Theoretically, anything that goes beyond the event horizon, that is the point of no return. But if you were to reach the event horizon, pass it, then you use subspace, it is theoretically possible that you could return to beyond the event horizon. Dorothy, this is, this is genius. I was under the impression that the farther you go into the event horizon, the more you would be uncoiled molecule by molecule until you were 
Spaghettified chips in Commander Rash. Yeah, I, I guess so, yeah. Computer, sorry. Dorothy. Yes. <clears throat> can you like carbon date that probe? And she actually looks at Commander Ooh. Rash at this one because while in character, she knows she's kind of deferring to the engineer of the group. Um, Rash says, uh, give me a moment here. Uh, okay. Um, that's... Um, Okay, Captain, you remember how, or maybe it was Stetka, you know, I don't remember who I talked to about this, but you remember how someone had a discussion about how you'd see the universe pass between your eyes or something like that when you fell into a black hole? Well, this Class 7 probe is both simultaneously the oldest thing I've ever seen, and it's also barely minutes old. Which, hold on. So, Russ, don't the Cations have a theory about this? Just like a donut! Yeah. He gets really excited. His tail's flicking back and forth. And he's like, I knew it! And he's going to, like, run to the console and start, like, pulling up old, uh, like, uh, papers that he's written on this theory. All right. So, let's... Let's try to focus for a moment. With the protection of our remaining bioneural gel packs and existing isolinear circuitry to supplement the the ill gel packs, can we maintain ship function? Well, uh, I think so, Captain. I mean, it's it's not going to be an issue. I mean, unless we want to be the Class Seven probe and fly into the thing, I think we're okay. Uh, I'm not feeling that adventurous, Commander. Could we take a um, a shuttle, perhaps? Commander, I think maybe we should recover the probe and see if we can glean a deeper understanding of how that sort of journey has affected it. Yes, yes, of course, Captain. That, that, that's, that's, that is exactly what I was thinking as well. If anyone looks over at his console, he's been working on trying to modulate the shields on a, on a shuttle to survive that. <laughs> Very and I think Rash notices, and he just, she just sort of pats you on the back and says, one day, buddy, one day. Um, Major Razib, how's Captain. the inoculations going? Uh, splendid, sir. I've already run out of two bandoliers. Oh, that good, huh? Remarkably so. What's the, I guess, what's the ETA on finishing up? Uh, once I leave this meeting, I plan on having the rest of the ship inoculated within 90 minutes. But first, sir, uh, I do believe uh, there is uh, a matter of order to be addressed. Um, as our ship's computer has demonstrated sentience and uh, consideration, uh, it is for the commanding officer to determine if said intelligence can be considered a member of the crew and thus subject to the privileges and responsibilities therein, which may also include from time to time a joint medical scientific diagnosis from the chief medical officer and science officer. It's a rough tail wag. I think that's a conversation that I'd like to have with Dorothy and Commander Stetko. Very good, sir. We'll, we'll make a determination and we'll let you know just as soon as we can. Understood. And With all Dorothy respect, has sort of been Dorothy. zoned out for a little bit, but she says, Oh, hey, Captain, you remember a few weeks ago when we were at Hell Station and I, I, I told you about that EPS conduit on deck three and five that kind of went whoop? Yeah. Um, this is going to sound really weird, but, and she looks at Razib for this. Isn't it a thing that 
sort of in I, I don't want to put it this way but you know like in fleshy brains how whenever you give a spark sometimes things change or something like that yeah like if, if someone gets hit by lightning or they suffer a stroke don't they change in certain neurologies they can be impacted by various external stimuli of such excitement yes you're trying to say that Athenia has had a stroke. I would not like to think that your emergent abilities were a result of such a biologically violent act. I wouldn't. I wouldn't call it like having a stroke. I would call it like uh, being hit by a bolt of lightning. Maybe there's a lot of power in those EPS conduits. Well, again, there's very little data on the emergent properties of starship intelligence uh, but it has been noted from time to time there are two such incidents i can recall in memory but should the discussion between you the captain and commander stetko prove fruitful for you and respective of your choices as a sentient being it would be my honor to work with Commander Saras to establish a better understanding of how you might be affected by ship systems and vice versa, if only to support your independence going forward. And if I may add, to give you confidence in the new independence that you have. And Dorothy looks a little overwhelmed at this, but I think Rash... Uh Oh, go ahead, Stecco, what do you got? Dorothy, you've never been to a concert, have you? No. I have a great holodeck program. Klingon Metal. Kayless's sisters. Oh, I love them. Hold on, accessing. Isn't that the band that Ensign Mouse covers when he does Talent Night? The very same. Concerts are the best environment for empaths because everyone is just having the time of their life. But I would like to invite you to the holodeck soon once we figure out this whole bioneural bio yeah. gel pack thing. Yeah, yeah, I, we could do that. I'd like that, yeah. And uh, okay. I think Rash is going to just be like, <gasps> all right, I'm out of coffee. Let's wrap this up. Uh, Captain, I'll fix as many gel packs as I can. Uh, Sarus, you look thrilled. You're about to do your science thing. Um, Razib, you've got my engineers fixed. That's great. Uh, Dorothy, just find a mobile emitter or find a way to back yourself up because computers are wonky and things happen to them. And I, I don't know. Do you have anything else, Captain? Because if not, I'm, I'm actually due for three hours off, which I was going to spend sleeping. Major? Commander Rash, please make sure to have all affected gel packs uh, taken to quarantine sub-level four at Med Bay for proper analysis. I need to make sure that there's no chance of reinfection. And also, now that we're out here in the wild, to see if I might be able to reinvigorate certain replacements. Worst case is we can always just replicate actual brains and run through there. Oh, engineering well, jokes. None of you got that. Okay. Well, Captain, before I dismiss... The, oh, I would like yes. to bring the uh, probe back for analysis uh, ASAP. Proceed, Commander. Uh, Commander Rash, um, do your best with the gel packs, but remember, I also want those test ones. Yeah. Yeah, I... Uh, why don't you roll me uh, three challenge dice, Captain, and I'll tell you how much I can get. <laughs> Oddly specific request. Mm -hmm. Commander. <laughs> All right. Uh, so out of character, if you want to adjust on the spreadsheet, you'll get two Tetrion particles on your resources list for your efforts. But yeah. Unless anyone else has any other points of order, question mark. Tetrion. No. 
then I think what we're going to do is we're going to shift to that ready room conversation between Stetco, Williams, and Dorothy, and then we're going to open it up and let you all have your own special scenes, you know, kind of what we did a few sessions ago, where you got to go around the ship, meet the crew, etc., etc. Um, but we're going to have that conversation, and then the doors will be wide open. So, a little bit, a little bit uh, later, Williams, Stetco, and Dorothy... You all are going to be uh, taking a seat in Captain William's ready room. And it's interesting because uh, Dorothy actually, the black in her hair, that black streak, it kind of flickers in and out, almost like she's not sure whether to keep it or not, kind of a thing throughout this entire affair. But uh, <laughs> as, uh, as you all kind of take a seat and look at one another, and Dorothy kind of looks and goes, um, I, I, I read, I, I, I think this is called uh, what is it? The the talk is is that what this is? Because I know how it works. You know, there there's there's a bee and a bird, and you kind of throw them at each other, and things happen. It's not that talk, Dorothy. Oh, not that. Oh, okay. Um, I <clears throat> I want us to get a sense of what your new responsibilities will be aboard the Athenian. And of course. I want to I want to make those very clear because now that you've your whole is greater than the sum of your parts. Just as any living creature is. And make no mistake you are alive artificial or otherwise. That said, it falls to us to find some place for you in the crew hierarchy. If I may be so bold, I Mm -hmm. would say something that I'm not quite sure I should be ordering anyone around. I had a thought had crossed my mind as your responsibilities lie in the facilitation of the duties of others. And I had a thought, and Commander Stetko, I think you're uniquely qualified to comment on this as the executive officer. I was thinking about dusting off an old rank that we haven't seen in Star Trek, or Star Trek. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> Starfleet for quite some time. Uh, and that is the provisional rank of yeoman. Quite traditional, RJ. I, I have my moments, but if we look in the history of Starfleet, the traditional role of a yeoman is to facilitate communication between the staff and gather and provide information as needed. And Dorothy, I feel that you are supremely suited to that role. What what do you think? The only thing I would add is that traditionally yeomen are more than a secretary to their captains. I don't need a secretary. I need... I need an officer. Well, then, as a provisional yeoman, I would do this. And she snaps her fingers, and materializing on your desk is a fresh cup of coffee. Just the way you like it. It is 2,300 hours, sir. You do usually take your coffee at this time. Very true, Dorothy. Very true. But I, I, I didn't come in here to make unilateral decisions, although I certainly could. I'm the captain after all. Commander, I know you said that it's a traditional kind of a choice, but I do genuinely want to know, are you in favor of this? Dorothy, when the captain is not on the bridge, I am usually overseeing that spot so you would not just be 
Captain Williams Yeoman, you would be mine as well. Then allow me to do this. Snaps her fingers, and materializing in your hands is a jumja stick. I've noticed you like those on Thursday evenings. Okay. Um... <laughs> jumja stick? What are you, three? Do you need some water? And then then didn't quite quite catch that. Oh, that's low. Hmm. Well, I can recommend you for this spot, and I would certainly accept you as my yeoman, Dorothy. It truly is your choice. We used to set your parameters for you and give you the the fence post to stay in, but I don't think that's the case anymore. Ultimately it's your choice. We can only offer you the option. I'd be happy to, and, um, should I wear red, gold, blue, white? I think, uh, red with a, uh, red with a half tip would be just fine. And it, she just sort of nods, and then her form, like, whoop, full red uniform with that black pip on it. Now you'll get to see if Starfleet life actually suits you. And with that, I've been meaning to ask Dorothy, are yeah. you able to turn over the <clears throat> computer's function to the default haptic interface? And yes, it's just that it hasn't been done since I came aboard. It's not like I erased the functionality, no. Well, it's only because <clears throat> if you're going to be a member of this crew, then you're going to have set duty hours. And Frankly, sir, I think I should always be on duty. That's not how it works, Yeoman. Fair observation, sir. So. Why don't we compromise? When you're on duty, you have full access to the interface. And then when your duty hours are over and you're getting some R&R, &R, you resign it to the haptic. My only question would be, which shifts do you want me on? Well, Alpha, certainly. Well, Beta is also a good option. Perhaps a compromise then? Alpha and Gamma, perhaps? I have noticed that Gamma Shift does seem to, what is the expression, need a little bit extra help sometimes. Well, that sounds good to me. Of course, Commander Stetco worked the duty shifts, so final say will be hers. I'm aligned to that. Oh. Well, in that instance, and Dorothy stands up, I, uh, if I have my time correct, uh, we've got about three hours before those black holes hit, and, uh, I think there's a party going down on, uh, one of the loud, well, I shouldn't say one. I'm detecting at least six different parties that are of note. I don't know if any of you want to join them, but. <laughs> I, uh, it's been my experience in the past that the captain tends to bring a party down. Hmm. Uh, the first officer, however typically a uh... they're usually the life of the party what can I say I um, think I am getting a reputation that being said sorry I do would like to speak with you for a few moments of course he gets um... the hint and says just call I'll be around and Dorothy sure. goes whoop out of existence uh, yeah so she would make sure Dorothy like probably wasn't listening mm -hmm. and then she would sit back down and be like so she has emotions now oh do you, do you mean you you got something I felt them come 
online in astrometrics earlier. It's remarkable, isn't it? We're, we're present for the emergence of a truly sapient life. We it's it's just like the birth. It's it's like a it's like any birth. It's it's ironic. The reason that we're here in the first place is to seek out new life and in this instance it's been right under our nose the whole time something about this quadrant since we've gotten farther away from the uh, galactic barrier I have noticed my senses are not as heightened and that presence is still there but not as strong Good. Here's hoping it stays wherever it is. But I think yeah. after after a few odd missions, Commander, I don't know about you, but I feel a change in the wind. It is nice to simply observe and record for once. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to be in astrometrics for the remainder of this phenomenon. I want to witness every second I can. I've, astrophysics has always been a passion of mine. All right, well, I'll uh, pour one out for you. And she like pats him on the shoulder. Yes, please, <laughs> please do. Well, maybe, you know, before we go, before we go our separate ways for the evening, and he's going to reach into a cabinet and um, Jim, he's going to pull out that platinum bottle uh, mm -hmm. that the Ensigns gave him and say, why not um, why not have one for the road? What is it again? Like, I'm asking out of character. What what, was, what did they give him? Something it's purple, a, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Some, it's purple. It's purple. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Fairly that certain looks... it's safe to drink. Um, it's older than I am. Yeah, I was so. gonna say that looks pretty aged, but uh, it's the first time I do. I mean, it's the first time I've had one of these. So, cheers, Commander. Cheers. And as you take a sip, um, I don't know if any of you are whiskey drinkers or bourbon drinkers, but it uh, it's one of those that is. It goes down so smooth that you kind of look back at your glass and you go, oh, that's a bad, that could be very bad decisions in the making kind of a thing. Oh, that's. I'm going to parcel that out in small doses because I have a feeling this bottle you, could get out of hand real fast. You better fast. keep that hidden. Yeah. Damn. In fact, you should hide it from me. And he puts it back in the <laughs> back in the cabinet and uh, seals it with his personal authorization code. <laughs> oh, cheers, sir! She'll uh, leave with it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think the captain will linger in his ready room for a few minutes, regard the uh, cup of coffee, sort of look out the window, and then maybe with a shake of a head and a and a smile, stand up, take the cup, and leave the ready room to head to the astrometrics lab. And now we open it up to the masses, as it were. Um, so, Sarus, Razib, William, Stetko, what kind of scenes do you want to tackle here while we've got time? I would say that Razib and Sarus may have convened in a science lab somewhere to evaluate, say, a ongoing treatment plan for the the gel packs or uh, to discuss medical precautions, observing or participating in uh, the stellar event that's about to occur. Sure. Uh, tell you what, let's do it in sick bay because I think sick bay is probably one of the quieter parts on the ship right now. Um, but you do, of course, have laboratory facilities in sick bay, which are quite heightened. So let's just put you over here in this uh, laboratory over here. Where's Saras? There's Saras. There you are. So, Sir Russ is going to like almost sprint into the medical lab. 
he'll look a little frantic, like almost nervous. And he's looking both ways. He goes, oh, finally, I've managed to lose him. I, for a Ferengi, he is tenacious. And he's going to go and find a place to sit down and uh, and like have a couple data pads and just start uh, start uh, start like doing whatever he was doing. Yeah. You've lost someone. Yeah. Oh, oh, geez. Oh, you must you must alarm. You are sneaky for someone with three legs. It's my lab. It is fair. But it's actually good that I ran into you, Doctor Doctor Razib. Um, I wanted to discuss with you some, well, to put it plainly, uh, precautions uh, for the rest of the ship to make sure that this disease or sickness does not, well, uh, get worse. I could talk to you about that, but I'd like to note that you seem remarkably ebullient for someone who lost someone. Do I need to make a call? Oh, no, it is a, it's a complicated situation. I have a, um, how do you say, a fan. And he is um, rather exuberant. Ah, you need private space. He does not know the meaning of it, nor concept. I don't think he ever realized it existed. I, I just needed a moment to breathe. I don't mean to be rude to him. In fact, I feel terrible. And then he goes on a little bit of a tangent. So let's talk about this stellar event. Well, based on my research, it seems that the shields are holding. However, there is the current uh, illnesses that are unfortunately bypassing some of my quarantine procedures. I was hoping that perhaps with a medical as well as a scientific approach to this, we could uh, stifle this, uh, well, for lack of a better phrase, a pandemic. The Arethian flu. Yes. I am certain with your skills and assistance, we could very well deploy some kind of inoculation that would be aerosolized through the ship's life support systems. That is a brilliant idea. And he'll take out one of his data pads and start like pulling up schematics of the ship's life support systems and looking at how we could make it, you know, airborne um, and then just dissipate it throughout the throughout the vessel. I don't know if you want me to make a roll or if we can just- No roll know, required. Actually, Doctor, I believe this could this could work. However, I would encourage us to focus primarily on the locations that are currently infected to cease that infection. And then perhaps we could, oh, no, I have a much better idea. If we created certain rooms where we could get all those that were infected, I'm rambling, aren't I? I believe your first solution would probably be the most effective solution to avoid any delays in ship system services. Very well. Um, that is the one that we shall use. Um, I will make the necessary modifications. But there is, though, one other thing I wish to ask you. I have been working with, well, you seem less outgoing than the other members of the crew. Have I done something to offend you, Doctor? No, of course not. I'm what is the word the captain used that one time? I am obsessive about maintaining cleanliness in the sick bay areas and such. I spend a predominant amount of my time here and in the satellite offices across the ship to ensure that should anything um, cataclysmic erupt on board that requires our assistance, the last thing anybody has to worry about is greasy, filmy surfaces. I am going to ask you a question, Doctor. And of course, as is your prerogative, you are free to say no, but I would like to invite you to a holodeck program that I have come to personally very much enjoy as my companion and friend. Which holodeck program? That is the surprise. Although, wear a swimsuit. You can swim, can't you? Of course. Brilliant. You will love this. I will look forward to participating. And uh, with that, I think Sir Russ is going to look extremely proud of himself and um, get up, give the doctor a curt nod, and um, very slowly make his way to the door. Ask and the before computer. you leave, sir. Oh, yes. 
Um, I have drawn up some specifications on how to enhance the myelination of the existing ganglionic clusters of the, the gel packs. Uh, this may help in data transmission across the severe ship systems. And I believe with your approval, we might be able to implement these findings to ensure that they will be more robust in the event of some kind of infection. At the use of the word robust, his ears perk up a little bit and his tail flickers. He saw it looks brilliant. Doctor, well done. Thank you. Um, tomorrow night, um, 6 p.m., meet me on Holodeck 4. That 1,800 hours in humancation or Bajoran hours? That was an old Earth um, style of measurement. I... I've been doing a lot of reading and watching old Earth films. Forgive me. 1,800 hours. And then he'll, he'll bolt. I will see you then. And he will turn back into the viewport of whatever sample he is studying. Cool. I love it. All right. Uh, any other scenes people want to tackle while I've got you here? Yeah. Um, so Stutko would be in the holodeck or approaching the holodeck. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that this might be a little like monologue-y, but I would That's just fine. like to describe sort of what she does. Um, so she would uh, computer load program uh, Arzu Kalis, Kalis's sisters too. Okay. And yeah, the uh, computer chirps and says program ready, enter when ready. So the doors would part and kind of like your kind of a classic stage with like foggy lighting and like lights and pyrometrics and like very Klingon-y like rock sounds would be emanating from the stage. And like there's just like a sea of people in front of her in the crowd and she would like step through and in and she is... Um, so empaths do not feel emotions from holograms. So she stands amongst the crowd and enjoys the sight and the sounds nonetheless, but the emptiness that she's feeling is sort of a stark reminder of all the things that she misses from the Federation that she cannot be a part of. And while it's a good you know, it's a it's a fun environment and she would love to take like Dorothy or the rest of the crew into the program with her. It still will never kind of like scratch that itch that she misses from home. Play with that actually. I think there's an opportunity here. So, you know, you're enjoying the mm -hmm. program, you know, you're mm -hmm. kind of enjoying the sights and the sound when the door opens behind you and in steps Ensign Mouse, uh, which you again, he's the guy who does the uh, covers of the Kayless sisters. Mm -hmm. And he's actually holding a traditional uh, Klingon axe. And when I say axe, I don't mean literal axe, though maybe Klingons would merge an axe with a guitar. You know what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. Um, he walks in and he's like, um, Commander, I got a, a report that I should come to Holodeck for. Can't hear you. A, a computer lower volume by 25%. And then he repeats. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Have you used this program before? Well, uh, not the specific one, but uh, I know the song they're covering. Yeah. She throws the horns up and she's like, I I, heard, I felt you come in. I didn't, I knew that you, you were a fan too. Well, yeah, you probably don't get down to uh, lower decks, but uh, we, uh, me and the band, we hold a, a little practice session or a little concert uh, every Friday. Every Friday. Yeah. It's just for Lower Deckers. I mean, sir, if you want to come, we're not going to say no. I'll think about it. I'm, it's probably too cool for a captain, right? But I'm not a captain. I mean, yet. we. I mean, the captain's the one that gave me the push I needed to even begin reaching out and forming a band. So we'd be happy oh. to have him, too. All right. Um, I would love to join cool. I then, uh, uh, do play a little Andorian flute myself. 
Oh. I can think of a few ways we... Computer, please give the commander a uh, Endorian flute, please. And one materializes hanging off in the air so that you can grab it. And then he starts playing a few riffs and says, What about this? Uh, join me whenever you're ready. Yeah? Yeah. And as you two start jamming out in the middle of the holodeck program, I think that's where we'll call that scene. Awesome. Any other scenes people want to tackle? I I am good. The, the captain's just in astrometrics watching this phenomenon completely enraptured. Then let me check Razib and Saros. You guys got anything? Just a quick scene of Saros hiding in one of the, like, uh, I'm having a mental block, like the tubes. Jeffrey's tubes? Like, Jeffrey's tubes. And, like, you see it, like, like you see it's just, like, partly open, and he sees the Ferengi ensign, like, looking around for him, and he's just, like, like quiet and just, like, trying to hide and looking, like, really nervous. That's all. For a Cation, he is remarkably slippery. He scurries down the Jeffreys too, on all fours. <laughs> then I think, unless anybody has anything else, I think our final scene is going to be the captain in Astrometrics. Uh, you know, again, you're sort of there by yourself, but uh, after a few moments of... Uh, just sort of catching your breath, just taking in the sights and the sounds. I think Dorothy does materialize next to you and says, um, I can count it down for you, sir. Uh, we have about a minute left. Thank you, Dorothy. And uh, she kind of turns and looks, and as she counts down, we have a hybrid external and internal shot that the black holes swirl closer and closer and closer until they merge and emit this extremely bright pulse of energy that lasts for barely an attosecond. And moments later, you're looking at a very large, singular black hole. And Dorothy kind of smiles and says, that, uh, I feel like we witnessed something very cool today. And the cat will not. Yes, we did, Yeoman. Yes, we did. I'd like for the captain to feel a prick on his shoulder as Razib is standing next to him with an inoculation for extremely bright lights. Nice. That. Yeah. Sorry, Captain. You're the last person on the crew that I was able to meet from, you know, bottom up. Th that tracks, Major. You're extremely sneaky for a man with three legs. It's well practiced, sir. Some people try to evade me. I don't understand why. And he'll skitter back through the door. Dorothy leans in and says, I was going to warn you, sir, but you did need the inoculation, so I didn't want to. Officer thinking, yeoman. Officer thinking. And that is where we will call to a close session five of Star Trek Euthenia. So yeah, what did you guys think? Uh, I'm interested to hear your feedback. Only oh, positive. This, this one was great. It was. I amazing. mean, they've all they've all been great. This one's a good like little self-contained episode. It's like a chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. you Fresh know? out of the oven, that's ooey gooey, and you pull yeah, it apart. Yeah, you just chips. love it so mm. much. It's just like, and everyone loves it. I just loved it. It was great. It was yeah. nice to have some time just to be our characters and interact with one another without some sort of, I mean, there was something to, we had to fix, but it wasn't like yeah. crazily pressing. And it was nice to just get some more of those personal moments and, and see the characters for more than just their roles on the ship. So I think that was very well, well orchestrated by everyone. Yeah. And seeing Dorothy um, develop as well. And um, I'm really excited about like bonding with Stetco and Dorothy and like fun times. It sounds concerts. Awesome. Concerts. 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 Yeah. I'm excited about Beach Day with the Doctor. I know we have to make them a holodeck episode. I, I think we either have to have a holodeck episode or we just need to allude <laughs> to one. Like I think that needs to become a thing. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying you need to go the full Miles, uh, Miles O'Brien and Dr. Bashir route, but I think that would be kind of cool, actually. He's going to be Saras' best friend. He just doesn't know it yet. There you go. 
This is go. true. Razib doesn't know it yet. <laughs> Oh, but uh, there was Loved a few it. things I uh, I wanted to say about Dorothy because I did see some questions in chat, uh, but I did want to sort of answer a few of them. Um, so first of all, the reason she was snapping her fingers was, as some of you guessed, uh, it was to show that she was doing something to the senior staff. Because something I've observed is that it doesn't matter the system, it doesn't matter the group. When a godlike entity or someone that has control over your ship or whatever, whenever they do something and don't tell you or give a sign that they're doing it, the players get a little antsy, understandably so. Um, so that's why she's always snapping her fingers to do things. Um, another question I saw was that uh, you all were wondering whether there was a replicator built into the captain's ready room desk. Uh, no, what happened was Dorothy was literally uh, calling on a replicator and then using the transporters to beam them where they needed to go. So it was kind of a, a hybrid system kind of confluence there. Um, the other question was, what was it about the black hole that was causing the Tetrions? The only thing I'm going to give a hint wise is that maybe it was a planet that blew up. Maybe it was a little star that blew up. We'll just have to tune in and find out. Mm. But yeah. With that, I'm going to end the recording here for YouTube, but Twitch stick around because we're going to rate somebody, but YouTube, see you later.